everyone, and welcome back to Casual Climbers, a podcast by and for beginning hikers and those who may not quite be physically ready to tackle the Appalachian Trail. I'm your host, Donna Patrick, and with me is my husband and adventure buddy, Roy. Hi. Hi, Roy. Now, we just got back from this one, so this one is very fresh in our memory. Yeah, our muscles haven't even gotten a chance to get really sore yet. They have not. So in this podcast, we provide you with information, tips, and tricks on how to get into hiking in the Blue Ridge area, and we will cover some of the hundreds of trails in the various parks in the region, and hopefully maybe entertain you along the way. Yeah. We're two middle-aged, perhaps not in the best shape hikers. Definitely not in the best shape hikers. (laughs) Who love the outdoors and want to share our experiences with you. Yeah. Let's get into it. Let's go. So today was another twofer, Donna, like last week. Yeah. So we did the Brissy Ridge and Pipsissawa trails there at Paris Mountain State Park. Now, the reason we did them both is because you can only get the, to the Pipsissawa via either the Brissy Ridge or going the very long way around Sulphur Springs, Canuga Trail, North Lake Trail. Yeah, we touched on that just a little bit last week. This was a, definitely a better way to get to the Pipsissawa. But still, it's 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 a misnomer. I think how they they call the Pipsissawa Trail what easy or something. I don't know, but moderate, moderate. Okay, thank you. Yeah, but you have to go through a not moderate trail to get to the beginning of the Pipsissawa Trail. Yeah. So so he, here was our day by the numbers. The total distance of both these trails was 4.59 miles, and it was mostly a loop. The time we took was 3 hours and 25 minutes total time, including stops at a comfortable pace, and 2 hours and 1 minute of that was actual moving time. So if you pushed through and didn't stop once, you could get it done in 2 hours. Yeah, we came across a number of people jogging and whatnot. That's, that's kind of impressive to me. Yeah. Yeah, more power to them. Whatever fitness level you're at, you know, have at it. If if you feel like running this trail, that's great. If you feel like going at a very slow pace, that's great too. Listen, if you're calling yourself an unfit hiker, then you're not running this trail. I wouldn't think so. No. The lowest point that we that we encountered was definitely at the bottom of the Pipsissawa Trail, and that was 1025 feet above sea level. The highest point was at the top of Brissy Ridge, and that was 1,425 feet above sea level. This trail, both the trails are pet friendly. We saw lots of dogs today. Yeah, sweet dogs. But we didn't see many kids, and the the first part of the Brissy Ridge would be very challenging for little kids to get through, and so we'll we'll go through that now. So why don't you tell us about the first part of the trail? Oh, for the listeners, just so you're aware. I always post the route map on our website, casualclimbers.podbean.com. Look in the trail photos uh, section and you'll see the photos for each episode. We go counterclockwise in this particular trail for a very specific reason that we'll talk about later. Yeah, I, I appreciate the fact that you mapped it out that way, the way that you did. Yeah. So I want to talk about weather right out of the gate today because there was a huge winter storm that hit between yesterday and today and uh, I mean it didn't it didn't affect Greenville South Carolina except for in just the temperature when we started this hike now now keep in mind we're Floridians both of us and when we st- what what was the temperature when we started our our hike today 23 degrees 23 degrees so yeah that right there is enough to usually keep a Floridian inside. But it didn't slow us down. Clearly, we we got out there and we did it. And I'm glad we did. But yeah, the news has been talking about snow and winter storms across the country. More than 100 million people, nearly 30% of the U.S. population, underwent winter weather alerts between yesterday and today. So these were extreme weather conditions. Um, I read an article that said that these conditions have killed at least 60, 67 people across 13 states. Tennessee had the most storm-related deaths at 19. So this was a serious storm. Thankfully, we didn't get the ice and the snow and 
and all that. Although I would really love to see snow, Roy. What about you? I would too. Yeah. I mean, we moved here in the hopes that we would get a white Christmas. It didn't come close. Uh, but, you know, I, I love the, the cold weather and every single morning. The water that we put out for the neighborhood squirrels is frozen Eat. over, so they get a little ice skating rink on the front porch. I mean, that was so cute when that squirrel was pawing at the ice. <laughs> that was, I it mean. Was, it was cute and, and sad. sad. It was sad. Too. So I had to dump the ice out and just give the squirrel some fresh water. And then we saw little squirrel mm. footprints, but not the point here. Yeah. So, so anyway, I wanted to mention the winter storm because my mom was concerned about us going for this hike today because she knew we were planning on it so she texted yesterday and was like you you guys are not gonna you're not still going are you we did yeah so anyway so it was cold and we bundled you know the best thing to do here's my best advice for cold weather hiking is layer because you never know when you're going to be on the sun side of the mountain and on the wind side of the mountain and so having good layers is a way to minimize any problems that you may run into. But let, so I wore, you know, a sock cap, gloves that weren't quite good enough. Donna's battery powered heating gloves saved the day. I had thick hiking socks on. I had thermal long johns under my uh, thick sweatpants. And then I had a, a knit thermal shirt, a sweatshirt, and a jacket on over. So uh, overall, I was plenty warm enough for this. But if you're coming anytime outside of winter, you know, obviously you don't need to worry about that. So we're going to start out by saying right away, Brissy Ridge is definitely a feel the burn hike. Yeah. This is a no joke hike, especially the first half. The first half going counterclockwise is very, very challenging for no other reason than the elevation change in the footing. The footing is precarious in many, many places. Yes, it, it definitely, um, uh, that's what, okay, so when we were talking about how we went counterclockwise, we went to the right first. The reason that we went to the right first is because that's the harder part of the Brissy Ridge. So you kind of, I think the Pips, you meet up with the Pipsiswa Trail, um, I can't remember how far in. T- was it like a mile and it's a half? It's right at a mile. Okay, a mile in. But it feels like you've gone farther because it's it's challenging to climb. You're cl- well, you're climbing down when you go to the right first. Now, if you do the loop the other way, you would be climbing up this difficult part. And also, you'd be doing the more difficult part at the end of your hike, which there again, I think, is the wisdom in going to the right first. Now. Some people would argue that hiking down is harder than hiking up. Hiking up gets me out of breath, but hiking down, it's a different kind of strain on your knees and your hips, I think. Definitely for my knees. And I I have a harder time going down because, A, because of my knees, but also because footing, especially with so many leaves falling on the ground. Is tough. In, and if there was any moisture at all, then there was possibly icy. We did see several rocks that were frozen over that had, uh, you know, small gradual drips from uh, a nearby crevice or something like that. But yeah, and we saw some frozen mushroom stems. Oh, yeah, we saw lots of frozen mushrooms. I call, call them mush- mushicles. Mushicles. Yeah. M- m- mush- mushicles. Mushicles. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I did not put any in my mouth this time, which, as Donna will tell you guys uh i have a problem with putting stuff in my mouth yeah i would think that mushrooms would be one thing that you wouldn't put in your mouth because you don't like mushrooms in general but i hate mushrooms they're disgusting they're gross yeah. fungus and shouldn't be anywhere I, near food. i disagree and so many of our listeners i think will disagree with you on that i think i'm in the majority on this one i'm not sure you are i'm pretty sure i am so <laughs> i will say that when we went to oh it was like um it was a botanical gardens in um, South Carolina. I believe it was. Oh, in you're talking about Clemson. the uh, yeah, the Clemson Arboretum. Yeah, it it's a beautiful botanical garden, but they have this section that has. They I think it's in the kids section, and it has herbs and stuff like that. And I, 
I get it, you know, I, like Roy wanted to pull a leaf off and put it in his mouth, and he did a few times, but I'm just thinking, you know what, this is outside, and this is where the birds poop and the lizards and all that stuff, you know, maybe... Where do you think vegetables come from, Donna? You wash them before you eat them. That's the thing. Rain is nature's washing machine. Yeah, okay. We're, we're digressing. We are digressing. On attacking me. No, I'm not attacking you. I'm just saying that I'm letting the listeners know how how you how you are your your unique facets certain unique facets of your personality that's mm-hmm. all yeah okay so. it's just i think right now you're just kind of being mean mean oh my gosh <laughs> all right uh there is there is some hazards on this trail guys uh about uh 0.4 miles in there are two trees that are clearly in the trail that you have to that have fallen that you have to climb over. There's a photo on the website that you'll see if you go to it to show you uh, what it's like. You can't go under them. You have to go over, and there's several spots that you have to shimmy around and and shimmy over. So keep mm-hmm. that in mind if you're thinking about doing this trail anytime soon. Now, Paris Mountain State Park rangers are very good about clearing them, but it was clear these had been there for. For a hot minute. Yeah, we came across a guy on the trail that had circled back because of that. He just didn't go any further on that. Now, he was with his dog, but I think he looked like he and his dog could have handled it. I mean, we handled it. Yeah, I, he could have handled it. I think he was unsure whether or not that was actually a real path. Right. He was unsure that that was part of the trail, that you're supposed to continue on past this mess. I will say, I think that was the only was that the only down stuff that we had to climb over? It was the only down tree that we had to climb over. But there were a number of parts of the Brissy Ridge that were very narrow. Yeah. That had rocks and heavy roots that you really had to keep your keep your balance on. And also, there is a section where it's earth stairs that are shored up by boards. Yeah, I think it was 34 steps. Going down. Well, yeah. So I had done this trail months and months ago, and I went the other way, and it really was brutal. The The Brissy Ridge Trail going clockwise from the trailhead at the top um, is rough. And so I wanted to make sure that when we did this one, because we were adding the extra two miles for Pipsissawa, that we did the tough part first right so one thing too that that you guys should know is the brissy ridge by itself is pretty unremarkable for views there's like next to nothing to look at there is no payoff there is no mountain view there's certainly no waterfalls there's not even really any water there's a tiny creek that you cross one time yeah. Well, no, there was that little tiny bridge thing. Remember? That's what I'm talking oh, about. Oh, that is. <laughs> it's like 18 inches wide. It's not very big at all. Okay. Yeah, but I, I still get excited every time I see water. As do I. As do I. But we're not talking about like the North Lake size or the big creek that runs through Sulphur Springs at the parking area there. This is a tiny little creek. Yeah. But for views wise, I didn't care for the Brissy Ridge for views. I think the reward for Brissy Ridge is the hike itself. Yeah, the bragging rights, being able to say that you did it. Um, I think that's it. That and getting to Pipsiswa and then doing Pipsiswa down to the North Lake. That's another reason to do this. But you could take the easy way. If you if you were just trying to do Pipsiswa, you might take the Brissy Ridge. Like you might just go to the left, take the easy way, easier way in, and then take Pipsissawa Pips down and then back up and then take the easy way around on the Brissy Ridge. That's that's an option. That's probably the better way to go if people are just trying to get to North Lake. And we had talked about this. There are the campgrounds that are there around North Lake. There's five camping areas that primitive camping areas, by the way, no bathrooms, no running water, no electricity that you can stay in. And that would be the best way to get to them is to take the Brissy Ridge clockwise, and then the Pipsissawa Trail. Now, the Pipsissawa Trail, we're going to go ahead and move into Pipsissawa now. 
this way, that trail is is shorter than the Canuga that we took to get to North Lake last time, and I found it to be fairly, fairly easy. Yeah. Yeah, there was that one really narrow part of the Pipsiswa that that it was like it was up on one side and down on the other and the trail itself was you like if you couldn't pass somebody else or anything this stretch of it and there were a lot of leaves with it being a little icy i was nervous about the amount of leaves like if there was any water or any slippery in between we got through it fine it was funny because on the way back you said we should lift up our feet because we don't know if there's rocks around those leaves. And you lifted up your feet. And I agreed with you in that moment. And then I started shuffling my feet because I just wanted to make sure that the leaves weren't too deep. So you're like, I thought you, <laughs> you were going to lift your feet and you're shuffling your feet. I, I changed my mind without letting you know. So yeah, made an executive decision and all ended just fine. Yeah, it ended fine. I mean, I think picking up your feet over that is easy, is better because you run the risk of tripping over a rock or a root much more than shuffling. But, you know, I we agree. got through it. Yeah. Yeah. We tried two different techniques. Yeah. We did. They were both successful. Yeah. And so the, the Pipsisawa decline is not that bad going from the top of Brissy Ridge down to North Lake. And the incline is not that bad either. So it was... And again, it was another one where there was no view payoff on on either way, at least on last week's Canuga Trail. As you wound down, yes, it was a harder trail, but as you wound down, you actually got to see the lake and the surrounding mountains. And there wasn't really much of that in the Pipsisawa. That's true. Yeah. So, it, you know, the payoff for the Pipsisawa is just getting down to the North Lake. That's that's really the only payoff. Yeah, we found a bench down there and had some. Like, there was somebody. There was somebody actually camping. There was somebody camping. Yeah. Yeah. Um, at the the first campground that you get. So now I kind of understand why that first campground is called Campground Number One. It was so far from where you you enter the North Lake Trail from the Canu Canuga, but it was right there if you're entering there from. The Pipsiswa, which we, if you were going to do the the primitive camping, which he's right, no phone, no light, no motor cars, not a single luxury. It's it's just really, really primitive, exactly what it says. But that's, I guess that's where they they mean for you to come in is from the Pipsiswa trail, because that's where number one is. Yeah, I don't know which way. It, it may be that Canuga was added later. I don't know, but... It is a much simpler way to get in. So if you're schlepping a bunch of stuff on your back, you and your family or friends, the left Brissy Ridge to Pipsisawa is the 100%. That's the way I would go. Either that, either that, or you could park at, you were mentioning, you could park at the main park because you do cross a road when you're on that part of the canoe, of the, um, the Brissy Ridge. That's right. Yeah. So there is a, there is a campground. I, I guess campground's probably not the right word for it. There's a little camp area called Camp Buckhorn that is inside Paris Mountain, and they use it for various events. I'm fairly certain you can rent it out. It is behind a locked gated area from the top of the parking lot for Brissy Ridge, and the Brissy Ridge Trail does cross over that road that takes you to Camp Buckhorn. Yeah, there's this white sign. It's like a what what are those signs called that you know, it's just set up. It's this plastic sign on the road that says Camp Buckhorn guests and park staff only beyond this point. And you're crossing the road at that point to go from one part of the Brissy Ridge to another part of the Brissy Ridge. It's all the more challenging side, but I feel like after that sign, after you cross that road that the Brissy Ridge is easier. So you could park down a little ways. Um, what was that? In the, the overflow parking. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then... And then walk up the road. Walk up the road and do that little tiny bit of the Brissy Ridge to get to the Pipsisawa. That wouldn't be bad to if you're going to be camping or if you just want to get to the beginning of the Pipsisawa, an easier way. 
I think, you know, that's bypassing. That's bypassing. A lot of the hard stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think, you know, if you're carrying 50 pounds of camping supplies and food, you'd want it to be as easy as possible to get there. Yeah. So, I, yeah. I mean, I do. <laughs> I mean, I guess some people really, really want, you know, that it's, I heard some people say, this is such a beautiful hike. And I love that energy. And I agree. It is a beautiful hike. Everything is a beautiful hike to me because we're in a mountainous area and it's colder weather and it's something very, very different for me, for us. Yeah. I did notice that there is a sign for the Brissy Ridge that says foot traffic only, bicycle, horses, and motorized vehicles are prohibited. So that's interesting. That's there is a part of the Brissy Ridge that is motor, or that is a uh, mountain bike accessible, and that is the first part where it's at the trailhead to where the Canuga Trail splits off. Okay. But the majority of Brissy Ridge is not mountain bike accessible, and I can totally see why from the first part, the yes. first half going counterclockwise. You'd have to walk your bike over. You'd have to pick it up over things. You'd have to, yeah, it's, it, is, it is not an easy footing situation. Yeah. So overall, though, you know, it, the Brissy Ridge is great if you're looking for a workout. If you're looking for views or a casual stroll, there are way better choices. You're not going to get any views on this one. You're not going to get any exciting vistas. You're not going to get a nice leisurely walk in the woods. This is a challenging trail where the only payoff, in my opinion, is the fact that you completed the trail. I, I mean, I don't know. I, we, we took a few pictures. You can see mountains through the, I mean, the, through the trees that don't have leaves on them. I took a few pictures, and I'll put them on, on the, the website. But, yeah, it, there's, there's prettier. I, yeah, there's prettier hikes out there. There's, there's a prettier hike literally off of the, the Canuga Trail is a way better hike, in my opinion much prettier hike and it's right there yeah I, so we started doing this in the winter and so i keep thinking to myself we're gonna have to come back and revisit this when the mountain laurels are in bloom the, the spring and fall so the mountain laurels in spring or when the fall you know colors are are out Those i didn't see any mountain laurel trees m maybe a handful here and there yeah. On the Brissy Ridge or the Pipsisawa. I not like we did in Sassafras Trail that was just exploding with mountain laurel trees. Yeah. I don't know. I'm If you want to work out it so that's my opinion, listeners. If you want to work out and nothing else, Brissy Ridge is great. If you want beautiful views, this is not not the trail for you. Or if you want an easy way, easier way down to North Lake, Hipsissa was the way to go. But just maybe park and come up the road and do a little tiny bit of the Brissy Ridge. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so the, it wasn't. This episode will be fairly short, listeners. Shorter than usual, probably about you know twenty five thirty minutes. Just because it's there's not really much to remark on on these particular ones. We, you know, last week we covered the North Lake, which was absolutely b beautiful. So there's not much to cover here, just uh, two trails uh, on the one. And Pipsissa was fairly easy. I would definitely classify it as a maybe a break the sweat only because the incline back up. Right, Donna? A little bit, yeah. Um, we had lunch down looking at the North Lake. That was really nice. Yeah, we had a blue sky day. We, um, I, I have a thing for blue sky days, and it was a blue sky day for us today. Roy likes blue skies, but he likes some clouds. He likes having the clouds that mix mix things up. Texture. I like yeah. texture to the skies. Yeah. yeah. I like I like that too. But I love blue sky. Blue's my favorite color. So yeah, so I got some good pictures of 
the North Lake, which that never get, I don't think that'll ever get old for me. We're definitely going to be visiting the North Lake in the summer. I agree. Yeah. North Lake is, is really, it's a true hidden gem in Paris Mountain State Park because we had been, we had gone to that park dozens of times and had no idea it even existed. Yeah. As I, a thing you could get to. Right. We had seen it from the top, I believe, of the Canuga Trail, but I didn't know it was part of, I didn't know that there was trails that went to it. Me either. And, and it's worth it. It is worth, whichever way you go, getting to North Lake is worth it. Yeah. So Brissy Ridge is, it's marked on the trees as yellow. You follow the yellow markings on the tree. And I found it to be pretty well marked. And the, the color that you follow to follow Pip Fisua is kind of an aqua color, which I found really close in, com- in color to the light blue that is the, the North Lake Trail. But that's okay. It, it's, it's different enough. It's, it's definitely aqua. Especially if you're coming off the yellow. Right, right, right. Percy Ridge. Yeah. yeah. Overall, it, it's a popular path. We saw lots of people today. Even in 23 degree weather, we That's saw lots of people. crazy to me. And, um, pe- you know, so we were like so cold at the beginning. Both of us, our fingers so cold that we thought, okay, this is where I lose my fingers to frostbite. But like painfully cold, my fingers. But everything else, my core, I overdid it with my core. Um, I was, I was too warm. My, my legs with my thermals and my jeans were fine. Uh, and hey, listen, I am in my mid fifties. I'm 54. And I realized that menopause has given me a superpower in hot flashes. So all I have to do is drink. I, I brought some caffeinated coffee. Now I normally drink decaf, but I brought some caffeinated coffee with me. And all I have to do is drink a little bit of caffeine and I'll get hot flashes. That definitely worked. So I had my coffee with me. My thermos kept it nice and warm. That was pretty great. But yeah, there in the beginning, we were so cold. Just our fingers. Just our fingers. Because our heads were warm. Our ears were warm. Everything else was warm. I, I mean, I was, right? You- yeah, the, I, my core was fine. My legs were fine. My head was mostly fine. So I'm, if you don't know, guys, I'm bald. So my head gets cold. I don't have any fur to cover it. And my fingers were brutal until I uh, pilfered her nice little oh, well, warming gloves. Yeah, he waited. He was he was such a gentleman. He waited me for me to have a hot flash and I didn't need my warm gloves anymore. And then I was like, oh, here, you can use these. Yeah. It was great. They they really worked and it, it kept it on. So other than other than that, Donna, I used uh, a single hiking pole. I yep. had my my hiking shoes on and my my hiking backpack that has the water bladder and I finished quite a bit of it more than I expected to out of the three liters that are in there you had one pole too was that enough for you for most yeah there was one point on the hike when I thought oh if I had two poles I would be using them here but it wasn't because of climbing up over rocks and it wasn't because of anything challenging it was just because I was tired it just was it, I, I sort of picture myself when I have the two poles, I picture myself kind of like a giraffe. The, the two poles become my front two legs and then it's just kind of nice to be able to take that pressure off of my legs and hips. But it was just a, maybe like a five minute stretch that I was just really tired. The, so hiking, I realized, hiking for me is a really good form of exercise because I'm a quitter. So if I was in a gym and I got to a point where I was like, okay, this, I'm just too tired to keep going in a gym, you quit and you go home and you have a bowl of ice cream and then you just, you know, completely ruin what you just did. But for me, hiking, like you're in, you're in it when you get tired, you have to keep going because you have to get back. You can't say this is where I live now. I mean, inside my head, sometimes I, I, joke with myself like that but yeah no you have to walk back out so yeah you can't get to the north lake and then say i'm done i'm not gonna move anymore right i mean i tried that a little bit last week with you know i told roy i said okay this is where i live now and he's like okay bye 
And <laughs> I did not. She's lying. <laughs> Don't listen to her. <laughs> so I know I can't do that with him. <laughs> but so overall, though, I mean, I'm glad we did it, of course. Oh, yeah. And, you know, I'm glad we were able to give this information to our listeners. But it's it's really not something I think I'm going to make a habit of doing. The, the payoff is so little for for the effort you put in, unless the effort is your payoff. And if that's the case, more power to you. And Yeah. For me, the payoff is the beautiful views and the, the wonderful sounds that you hear out in nature, and there just wasn't much of that. There, there is a possibility, too, that we might have come into this hike being a little bit more grumpy than we normally are just because of how cold it was. And just that's because possible. of the pain in our fingers. Yeah, that's possible. So we might we might be looking through not rose colored glasses at this hike. Poop colored glasses? No, nah, that's not even not a thing. It's a thing. I just made it a thing. Okay. I want our listeners to start saying poop no. colored glasses. Oh god, no, please don't. I do. <laughs> okay, guys. So that that's it. That's our episode for this week. Uh we did Pepsisua. And the Brissy Ridge Trail Loop, four point almost six miles, three and a half hours total time at a comfortable pace with stops. Like I said, we we had lunch down at the North Lake. As always, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Next week we will cover the last full trail at Paris Mountain State Park, and that is the Long Sulphur Springs Trail. Hmm? You looking forward to that one, Donna? Oh yeah. She she's not looking forward to it. I, I'm, I mean, it's gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine. It, it's probably gonna be a beautiful hike. And I know now that we can do this and we will survive. Of course we'll survive. So the Sulphur Springs we're, we'll do next week. Hopefully we have a lot of great things to tell you. Now we've done many, many parts of the Sulphur Trail. And several of the parts we've done have been beautiful. So I'm, I'm anticipating this is going to be an enjoyable trail for us. It starts out real low, and then loops up to the highest part of the mountain, and then loops back down. So it's going to be a challenge. It is considered the toughest trail at Paris Mountain State Park. So we saved the hardest for last. But again, if you guys enjoyed this episode, please like, subscribe on iTunes or YouTube Music or Spotify, or wherever you're listening to this podcast, leave us a comment. Comments are 100% how the podcast grows. Share it with your friends. Share it with your family if you find this interesting. And if yeah. there's anything that you want for us to cover, drop us a note, and I'm sure Donna will read it. <laughs> we'll both read it. We will both read it. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody. We hope you enjoyed it, and we will see you out on the trail. Yes.